to make it can uh, see. So welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for creating the time. I am excited to spend the next hour with you guys. Um, you know, Valentine's Day is tomorrow and I am not a big fan of this holiday at all. <laughs> not about it. Um, but I am all about um, the reminders of self-love. I love seeing that everywhere. Um, so that is exciting. So um, this session is called End Burnout Now. And I feel like this is crucial to us women. So I'm excited to share these goodies with you. My name is Charlotte Conter. I am the founder of Health Shiro and I am a recovering burnout addict. <laughs> so I'm going to explain what that's all about um, shortly. <laughs> So let's jump in. Okay, so in this webinar, you are gonna learn what is burnout? What is it all about? What are the symptoms leading up to burnout? Um, what are the symptoms of burning out? What does that even look like? And how is that impacting our health, never mind our entire life? What does that look like? Why a conventional healthcare system isn't enough when it comes to stress and when it comes to burning out? It's not enough. So we're gonna dive into that topic. And then we're going to, um, I'm gonna be sharing the five secret steps on how to end burnout now. So get ready for that. Make sure you grab your notebooks and your pens because I promise you're going to want to take some notes. And my intention for you is to learn what it takes to regain balance, to feel more positive, to feel hopeful again, um, to, to be able to like thrive through your day and not just like survive it and, and um, you know, going through the tasks. So jump in. Let's get started. Okay, so what is burnout? Burnout is a state of like complete exhaustion. It affects us emotionally, physically, mentally, and I'm going to add spiritually as well. And this is because of um, prolonged stress. If we, we're dealing with stress for a long period of time, we are going to burn out. And this is a gradual process. It's not something that happens like overnight, all of a sudden, boom, we're burned out. This has been, there's been lots of signs. There's been lots of signs. Universe, God, you know, whatever you believe in has been waving the red flag or the white flag going, come on, take a break. Um, you know, you got this and we're ignoring those signs. And then we lead to burnout. And, um, and when this happens, we feel so drained. We can feel, um, you know, so overwhelmed with even just the smallest task. Um, and, and we're just not able to meet the constant demands of our life. And I like this picture here. This person's like, battery's done. I am done. I have nothing left to give, right? This is burnout. Now the impact on burnout, whether this is at work or at home, this is going to reduce our productivity. So if we're feeling burnt out, there's no way we can perform our best. We can't perform our best at home or even at the office or in, in our relationships or with our kids if we are feeling burnt out. Um, our energy is completely gone, it is zapped, um, and this leaves us feeling helpless hopeless, um, cynical, pessimistic, right? And then even resentful. Um, and then eventually you may feel like you have nothing more to give. Like I am empty. I have nothing in my pockets. I cannot give another like five minutes of play to, you know, with my kids or I don't know, I listened to, you know, five more minutes to my girlfriend talk on the phone. Like I just cannot do it. It's not happening. And burnout spills out in every single area of our life whether it's you know our home life work life um finances um and, and then with our friends as well and then these chronic stress and then these patterns of burning out can also lead to you know changes in our body and once our body starts communicating with us begging us to slow down and we're ignoring all of that that really makes us vulnerable to illness and then disease as well so really kind of opening up uh, those those gates there so when we are on the road to burnout, so we're dealing with chronic stress and we're like, oh, like I'm getting close. I haven't burnt out yet, but I'm getting close. You start to feel like every day is tough. Like, okay, you wake up in the morning and you're like, can I get through this day? I just have to muster like eight hours, probably time with driving, and then I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. You are exhausted all the time. Doesn't matter how early you go to bed, you wake up exhausted. And as I mentioned, like just, you know, majority of your tasks, your daily tasks just seem overwhelming. Like, how am I going to do the dishes after breakfast before I head out the door? How am I going to get my kids dressed on time before I, you know, I bring them to school? Um, you just start to feel very like irritated. You know, everyone's annoying everyone at this point, you know? Um, 
Uh, but then we might not take it out on those like annoying people. We might save that irritability for our loved ones when we get home because we know that they're kind of stuck with us, right? So we might take it out on our kids. We might take it out on our partners, or we might even take it out ourselves with all these like negative self-talk. Um, so if you feel like on the road to burnout, you kind of feel like you're stuck in Groundhog Day. You, you know that the, the movie with uh, Bill Murray? You kind of, you're stuck in Groundhog Day, um, or you're that hamster on the wheel and you're just like running so fast and you're like accomplishing nothing. You're like, what is, like, is this life? What is going on right now? And then when you are burnt out, and I say you, I mean we, when we are burnt out, we are tired, we are drained most of the time. Um, we can get frequent headaches. If you're getting headaches uh, you know, a lot of the times, it could be because you're burning out. Um, muscle pains, inflammation, right, can cause inflammation in, in, um, in joints, um, in muscles. We're just feeling really like achy. That can be a sign of burnout. Um, lowering immune system, getting sick more frequently, where you start catching anything, everybody sneezes and you're like, oh, that's it, it's official, I'm gonna be sick in the next 24 hours, right? Um, change in appetite, maybe you're eating more, maybe you're not eating. Um, change in sleep habits, maybe you want to sleep all day, every day, or maybe you're not getting any sleep at all. Um, a sense of failure, like you just feel like you can't keep up with demands. Like you're like, okay, it's going okay with that work, but then I'm failing at home. Or it's okay at home and then I'm failing at work. You're like, I just can't give to everybody. So you start doubting yourself. Loss of motivation. You're like, I don't know if I can keep going on like this. I need a vacation from life. Um, feeling helpless, trapped, defeated. Um, negative outlook on life, right? Detachment, feeling like um, you know, no one else knows what it's like to go through what I'm going through right now. Like I am all alone, the sense of detachment. These are all signs of burnout. Decrease, you know, satisfaction. I'm just not feeling fulfilled. I'm not feeling passionate. I'm not feeling, you know, satisfied in my life. And I'm sure many of us, you know, that are on this webinar tonight have felt like this. Um, at one point in their lives. You can go on and in the chat if you want to, and you can just type, yes, <laughs> you know, if I have felt like this, um, I hear you, or no, <laughs> you're, you're on an island and you're by yourself there, Charlotte. Um, okay, so let's talk about the causes of burnout. Now this might surprise some people. So burnout for sure can come from careers. A lot of times we spend more time in our work, more time in our careers than we do at home. So you know, the stress of going to work, driving in traffic, all of that. So that can definitely lead to burnout. Um, anywhere that you're feeling overworked and undervalued, you know, we're at risk for burnout. But other factors also contribute to this. And this is like our diet. Our diet plays a huge role in our mental health, um, you know, and our immune system gut health, all of that. Um, and then also lifestyle. How are we managing stress? How are we coping with stress? Um, what does our home look like? Home life look like? Relationships look like? What does that look like? So all that can lead to burnout, but also personality traits. Now I'm going to name some personality traits here, but some of these can be twisted into, um, you know, positively reframed, but a perfectionist, right? Um, where nothing is good enough. Um, pessimistic. You know, you view yourself as in a negative light. You view the world in a negative light. I mean, if you watch the news, if you watch the news in the morning, you watch the news at night, I mean, chances are we're going to have a pessimistic view on the world. Um, or maybe we need to be in control because we know that we do it the best and we don't want anyone else to help us because we just want to get the job done. We want it done quickly. We want it done, we've done, you know, we want it done right. So let, let me just do this. And we don't want to delegate to others. Um, or the high achieving. High achievers, they go for the big lofty goals and they like, they crush them. Um, type A personalities and then they like, they burnt out. So some of these can be strengths, but any strength that is overused becomes a weakness. Any strength that's old become, you know, that we overuse becomes a weakness. So let's start rethinking burnout. So burnout attacks us on multiple levels. It attacks us physically because we can physically become ill. The headaches, um, you know, stressed out, the pain, lowered immune system. Mentally, right, we, become, we can become depressed, we can become anxious. Um, we just feel like just emotionally drained. Spiritually, we, instead of having, you know, hope um, and faith for the future that things are going to be, you know, working out well, we start moving into a place of fear and, and anxiousness and depression, right? And, um, and this kind of, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, but um, lower levels of consciousness, and we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit. 
and emotionally drained. We have nothing left to give anybody else. We have nothing else. And women, we're ter- like we're caregivers, right? We're so used to taking care of everybody. Like, you know, you need a kidney, sure, no problem. Oh, okay, you want my back? You want me to help you move? No problem. That's okay. You need cupcakes? No problem. You know, so it's tough. It's tough. It affects us um, financially. I mean, this could be doctor visits got to the point where we're so stressed out, we're burnt out, and then we're all of a sudden we're sick. So it could be doctor visits. It could be, um, you know, coping with burnout, whether it's like um, coping with um, shopping, coping with, you know, drinking, it could be drugs, it could be, um, you know, just, okay, let me go on a vacation because I can't handle this anymore. So we're going into debt, trying to deal and trying to make ourselves happy um, when that's not really the answer, right? These are all short-term fixes. It can affect our relationships because we're just so emotionally drained that we just have nothing else to give to those relationships. But yet, if we are burnt out and we are seeking out help from the conventional world, There's only really two ways that the convention world tries to help us, and that is to quiet the symptom of the physical pain, whether it's the headache, uh, you know, the stomach issues, the, um, you know, whether it's full blown, you're being diagnosed with something, they'll try and help you out physically or mentally. You're like, I am depressed. I am anxious. Um, you know, I, and and they'll try and help you with a pill maybe, right? But you can see that it attacks us on all these levels. We've got to address all of these. And this is where holistic health really comes into play. And this is the impact of burnout on our health. You guys, 95% of doctor visits are because of stress, 95. Oh my goodness. That is crazy. And according to, according to the center of disease and control, 85% of disease is based on stress. And then these are some other crazy stats. One in four people will pass from heart disease. One in two women and one in three men will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. And one in three will be diagnosed with diabetes by 2050. We're already, you know, 2020, like that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. So we are becoming more sick or we may be living longer, but our quality of life is going down. And then here, one in five children is obese. So that means like we're eating like crap and then we're teaching our kids, you know, how to eat like that as well, right? So we're going to dive into this. But first, traditional healthcare system. So, you know, a lot of times when we go to the doctor, we're like, okay, just fix me. I like, I know I'm not myself right now, please just fix me. But this era of medicine, this like sacred science of being this one true answer to save us from everything, honestly, it is over. And that's partly because Dr. Google, we can Google on the computer. What do I have? Oh my gosh, I've got headaches, I've got this, I've got that. Oh, oh, okay, maybe I'm depressed or maybe I'm this and maybe I'm that. But the thing is, the average time that we spend with a doctor is 12 minutes. We're not, we don't have enough time to get to the root cause of the problem. We only have enough time to quiet that symptom. So our healthcare system really doesn't focus on health. I mean, it really focuses on like maintaining that disease. Like, okay, you're depressed. Let's maintain, like, make sure that you are, you know, stable. Um, and able to function, you know, in your daily, in your daily life, Um, you know, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, all of that. And the reason that is, is that it uses, you know, our healthcare, healthcare system uses an acute approach when dealing with chronic issues. Um, so if I trip and I break my foot, you know, they've got my back. I know they're going to put a cast on it. Like they've got my back. Um, if I'm having difficulties giving birth and I need an emergency C-section acute, they've got my back. But if I'm dealing with anything chronic stress, burnout, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, you know, all of that, um, autoimmune, any of those things, those are all chronic. It is not enough. So we have to come back to our daily lifestyle, our diet, um, and make those changes. Um, but I'm not against modern medicine at all. I know there is a time and place for it. We just don't always want to run there first, um, and expect all our answers there, right? We want to make sure that we are also stepping into our power and making those changes. So right here, right now, there's never been a better time in history to take back control of your health, to live without fear of burning out, to feel empowered and hopeful for the future, to feel energized. We should not have to go through life feeling so depleted, um, to spend quality time with friends and family and not want to kill anybody, you know, <laughs> not want to sew anybody's mouth shut. Like we should be able to spend time with family and friends and do that, right? And you were born with a unique set of gifts. 
you deserve to shine those gifts to the world. Like we're waiting for you to shine those gifts from the world. And in order to do that, you have to be um, feeling your best. You cannot be doing that when you're constantly burning out and you deserve to start living the life of your dreams. How do you want to feel? Um, you know, how do you want, how do you want, what do you, what do you want your life to look like? You deserve to flourish in all areas of your life at home, at work. We deserve to have it all right, ladies. <laughs> Okay, so there's a bonus. At the end of this webinar, you have a chance to win um, a free Health Shiro toolbox. So this is a self-care toolbox that I put in like all kinds of goodies and I promise you, you're gonna wanna, wanna, wanna win it. So I'm gonna uh, check the attendance afterwards, see who stuck around to the end and then I'm gonna put you all in a name, uh, in, a, uh, in a draw, I'm gonna pull you out and then I'm gonna message you and ask for your email address or your mailing address and I'm gonna mail you this. So you'll be excited to see what's in that. So stay tuned. And before, I just want to jump in to let you know like where I was. I told you I was a recovering burnout addict. I was not joking. Um, the top left-hand corner there, that is my, my mom and my two brothers. I grew up single mom with my brothers. This was the three of us, and we were all like a year apart. So our household was busy, busy. Um, I mean, mom was exhausted. We didn't spend a lot of time in the kitchen. There was a lot of like fast food. There was a lot of, you know, going out, canned food, frozen food, you know, microwave food, all of that. And then our schedule was constantly go, 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 go. And that was probably because if we weren't like that, we were fighting. We were arguing, we were fighting with one another. And, um, you know, we were, I was in brownies, my brothers were in uh, beavers, you know, we all played competitive sports, we all did swimming, like, it, it was constantly go, 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 go. So I was, I've been trained to go, go, go since I was a child. Um, and then later on, I'm in university and my youngest brother in the top left all of a sudden fell 80 feet um, working part-time for a roofing company in his last year of high school. And um, his heart ended up stopping, you know, three times at the hospital. I remember my dad calling me um, while I was at university and the first time I've ever heard my dad cry. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, broke my heart. And I, I had no idea that young people could pass. <laughs> like that was my first, you know, when you're a teenager, you're so self-absorbed, right? But here I am, I think I was like 20, 19. And uh, you know, and, and here I was, I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't know young people could pass. And that really like hit me hard. And here I was trying to thrive through university. Um, you know, I had a couple of jobs and I should say like, I started my job when I was like 12 years old. And then by 15, I've had two jobs. And then that continued like up until my thirties having multiple jobs. So I've always kind of been go, go, go hustler, all of that. And then shortly after my brother's accident, my mom was diagnosed with diabetes. So I'm trying to like live my life, trying to go to all her appointments and help her out. I became meals on wheels, trying to help her get healthy and stay healthy. And then shortly after that, my dad had two strokes back to back. And it was just like, what is going on with my family? I need you guys all to stay healthy and alive. <laughs> like, what do I need to do? Well, how can I help you? And again, pouring my cup over, you know, to my family at all while during this time I was working, um, in a mental health inpatient unit at two different hospitals. I was working part-time at the school board. I was working part-time at a homeless shelter and I was working part-time at a, another mental health um, facility. So, I mean, it, I spread myself pretty thin. I was like, you know, night shift, day shift, night shift, day shift. And the only time I was not working was to play competitive sports and to go to the gym. So here I was super fit, um, you know, the top right-hand corner at 32 years old, you know, 10 years ago, and I was diagnosed with cancer. But I can tell you, there were so many red flags. I was burning out left, right, and center. I was getting sick a lot. I was exhausted. I was drained. I was irritable. Um, I, I was picking fights with my loved ones, like as a cry out for help. Uh, drinking too much wine at this point as well. And, and all of a sudden, boom, I got diagnosed with cancer. And I went through conventional treatment and I also dove into the holistic health world as well. And during this time, my best friend, uh, my sister from another mister, she was also diagnosed with spinal cord cancer. And this like blew me away. And um, she was given three months to live and ended up passing away two and a half years later after her diagnosis. And, you know, going through cancer is tough. Going through cancer and watching my best friend pass from cancer was just next level, next level. And um, I was definitely like hit rock bottom then. Um, there was days where I didn't want to get out of bed. Um, I didn't, I wanted to drink. I wanted to drink my like sorrows away. Um, I didn't want to hang out with anybody. You know, I was cutting myself off from the world. Um, and then I kind of snapped myself out of it. And I was like, man, I was given the second chance to live. Like I really want to make the most of it. Um, 
you know, I know Tisha would t like kill to have her life back again. So I didn't want to waste mine. So I ended up deciding to leave my career in mental health. Um, I left my pension, my benefits, <laughs> you know, I pooped my pants and I left all that, went down to the States and I became a certified health and nutrition consultant and a raw food chef, and then ended up launching my first health coaching business. And during this time, like I was really focusing on diet and nutrition, diet and nutrition. And then universe was like, okay, let me test you. <laughs> let me test you. And I was told, be careful with your arm. Be careful with your arm. We've removed a couple of lymph nodes from under your arm. If you land on that arm, you are going to potentially have lymphedema. And uh, I didn't really like, I wasn't, I was like, ah, I'm invincible. I'm fine. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I was invincible because I just went through cancer, but that's kind of my mentality. Like I'm good. I'm doing, taking care of my diet, plant-based raw food. Like I'm eating super clean right now, detoxing. I'm doing everything. And then all of a sudden I slipped and fell on ice, landed on my arm and right away my arm began to swell. So this is a picture of somebody having lymphedema. It's not my arm. I didn't even take a picture of it. My mind was not even there to take a picture of it. I was panicking. So I called Princess Margaret World Renowned Cancer Hospital. And I'm like, what do I do? What what do I do? I have lymphedema. And there was like, there's nothing, Charlotte, there's nothing you can do. You're going to have this for the rest of your life. And I thought, <laughs> F you would love, <laughs> like, I'm not accepting that. Got off the phone with them. And I was like, Oh gosh, like, what do I do? What can I do? And meditated on it. And, um, and I was like, okay, let's do this. So I decided I needed to like a massive result require massive action. So I wanted to take massive action. So I wrote down exactly what I wanted. So I thought about you know, I wanted to heal my arm and I visualized my arm becoming thinner, more mobile, you know, it was very painful. So just feeling like my normal arm again. And I visualized that and I felt so excited that it was healed. Um, so I continued to do that and I wrote it down, putting even more energy behind it. And then I decided to do a juice cleanse. And guys, this was like the like, toughest time period ever to do a juice cleanse between Christmas and New Year's. There's a lot of parties. And there's a lot of parties during this time. And I was like, no, thank you. No, thank you. I'm just sticking to my juice cleanse. And it's freezing. It is freezing. When you're cold, you want carbs, right? To warm you up. And here I am doing a juice cleanse, but I did it. <clears throat> Something that they told me would have forever within five days. Not only did I stop the damage, I reversed the damage completely using a holistic approach. And I was doing lymphatic massages. I was jumping on a rebounder, like all kinds of things. Um, which was amazing. So I decided like, what else can I do? I was told I would never have kids naturally after doing this. So again, I used a holistic approach. I was, I put it, I'm looking for a pillow. I put a pillow under my, you know, under my shirt and I'm like walking around like I'm pregnant. Um, I visualized it. I wrote it down. Um, you know, I continued cleaning, detoxing my body and flooding my body with nutrients and, um, and eventually became pregnant with my daughter and then my son. Um, shortly after that. So I had two back to back and now I use those same like holistic health and I'm going to be sharing those five secrets, but I use those five secrets even with my kids now. And you know that this middle picture in the, in the bottom with my daughter, Jasmine, here she's two years old. She can't even talk. You guys, she's not even doing full sentences. You know, when toddlers are like, you know, mama, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they're having a full conversation. You're like, I don't know what you're saying, you know, but you're, but you're cute. You're cute. That was my daughter. And I took her out of the bath and I put her in front of the mirror and I was doing mirror work with her. And I'm like, you know, repeat after me. And, and she can't repeat after me, but she must've been in her head or something. And I'm like, I am strong, you know, I can do anything and so on and so forth. And then she left the room, came back, pulled her headband over her, her forehead. I don't even know where she learned how to do that. Grabbed a spatula and was like, hiya. But imagine, imagine what our thoughts are doing to us. What are your thoughts? What are you saying to yourself? Are they negative? Are they empowering? Are they disempowering? Are they healing? What are you saying to yourself? Because it is powerful, you guys. Whether, you know, that whole like, which beast do you want to feed? It is powerful. And now my kids are part of my lifestyle. And since then I've decided to, um, I founded a company called Health Shiro's where I empower women to take back control of their health and I specialize in burnout. So why did I call my company Health Shiro's? Um, I don't want to be your health hero. <laughs> I'm not yours. I want you to be your own. So a health hero is somebody that looks at your health from a holistic perspective. So you can see the topics at the top there, right? At that, at that picture, heart disease, cancer, depression, anxiety, allergies, chronic fatigue. You know, a lot of these can lead or burnout can lead to, to a lot of these illnesses. And a health hero is going to say, okay, this is what I may be diagnosed with, but what is the root cause? What's really going on behind the scenes? And when we look at these root causes, we can see stress, poor diet, lack of exercise, nutrition deficiency, poor relationships, 
right? So we start to say, okay, well, what, what are, what are some actions that I can take to help um, heal some of those root causes? And then watch the magic happen. So there's so many things that we cannot control, but there's so many things that we can. So we're going to focus on what we can control, remove the things that are not really working for us and put in some things that are working for us so we can excel in every area of our life. Um, and know that you know, knowledge and education is key. It's key. And I know I'm preaching to the choirs because you guys are here. <laughs> so I'm preaching to the choir. But know this, like, and especially women, like we grow up listening to fairy tales, right? And that Prince Charming comes and saves us. But when it comes to our health, when it comes to preventing burnout, nobody is going to save us. Nobody. Um, you know, I wish there was. I wish there was. But it truly is on you. It's on you to make those changes. And you have everything in you right now to make those decisions. Everything in you right now. A health shero is somebody that gets knocked down and stands back up every single time over and over and over again, whatever it takes, you know, to succeed in whatever area she wants to succeed in. And this is going to have a massive impact. You guys, when you create the time, the energy to become your own health shiro, you start inspiring all your loved ones to do the same. They're watching you. They're watching you how you experience life now. They're, they're developing their own patterns, whether it's your little ones, whether it's your partners, your loved ones, your friends, coworkers, they are watching. And when you step into your power, you are going to be inspiring other people to do the same. And that is the power of becoming your own health shiro. And a health shiro knows this, you guys, a little bit of action equals a little bit of results. What is your body crying out for? What are you crying out for? If you want some big changes to happen in your life, you, not your loved ones, not anybody else, you have to take massive action to have those massive results. So I'm going to go through some testimonials from my um, clients that I love. Um, this one's from Sky. She's an amazing artist. Definitely follow her on Instagram. That's her handle there, Artistic Love um, JS. And uh, so she, um, Sky said that Charlotte was that voice that gave me that hope that I needed to take the next step. She gave me some tools to manage and the courage to keep going. Her compassionate Karen voice is what helped me in our first call and then all the information and knowledge that followed. Charlotte includes healing on all levels, mind, body, and spirit. Another one from Michelle from Wise Mama Essentials. Charlotte is a wealth of information to help you elevate your life to the next level. And Sabrina, um, who's a beautiful soul from Pickering, um, she wrote, my journey with Charlotte began not long ago, but I felt like I've known her all my life. I was meant to connect with her for her guidance and encouragement. The knowledge I've gained and the steps I've taken in forgiveness, self-care, journaling, healthy eating has been instrumental to my life as a working mom, wife, and friend. Thank you for helping me see my potential. I'm a brand new me, and I know life has so much more in store for me. Charlotte has always been a positive light, objective listener, and encouraging support system I've always wanted. Thank you. So know that if you are going through Verna right now, if this is a pattern, know that you have the power to get through this, that you can get through this. So we're going to be diving into the five step systems. These are my five secrets, you guys. I'm excited to share them. Um, so this is N Burnout Now. We're going to jump into self-care, then go into healing diet, healing environment, spiritual awareness, and inner child. So the first one, self-care. Now we've already covered this. We saw the stats. Stress plays a massive role on our health. Huge. But what is stress? Stress is actually just the adult word for fear. So when you say to yourself and you catch yourself like, "Ugh, I'm so stressed, replace it with, I'm so afraid, and then finish the sentence. What are you afraid of? not being able to finish the task. What are you afraid of? Not being on time, being judged by others. Like, what are you afraid of? S success, failure? What is it? You know, so really take the time to acknowledge what you're actually afraid of. Self-care needs to move to the top of the list. A lot of times we're like, yeah, 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 I'll get to it when I have time. No, it's the opposite. Focus on self-care and you will create more time. So more self-care is going to equal better relationships, more productivity at home or at work, more energy, happier. You're gonna dive deeper into self-awareness, more forgiveness, more self-compassion. When you're more compassionate for yourself, you're more compassionate for other people. When you're, when you're um, able to forgive yourself, you're able to forgive other people. Better immune system, deeper healing, um, and less burnout. 
So self-care, what does this mean? This just means you're making your health a priority. It means that you are creating, well, this is one thing that I, that I suggest to all my clients as well, that I think the best thing that you can do, if there's like, you know, I would definitely write this down. The one thing that you definitely want to be doing is creating a morning routine. A morning routine needs to have the same priority as brushing your teeth. You wouldn't even think about leaving your house in the morning without brushing your teeth. Self-care has to have the same priority. Um, and at first, it's going to feel like work. Like, oh, God, like, I can't believe she told me I have to do this. Like, why do I have to do this? But then it becomes a habit. And I'm telling you from personal experience, I do this every single morning. It's like getting dressed. I don't even think about it. I do it. Uh, I do my morning routine. And, um, and days that I don't, if I have to, like, rush out, like, I slept, I don't know, slept in or the whatever, crisis in the house with the kids, whatever it is, and I didn't create the time to do a self-care, if I go more than two or three days, <laughs> like, I'm irritable. I am irritable. I'm irritable. I'm getting annoyed over the smallest little things. And these are all red flags. When I start like complaining about other people, I'm like, oh, red flag, red flag. When I start to have negative self-talk, I'm, I'm getting, you know, easily irritated. All these are red flags for me that I need to pull back and focus on myself. Um, so pick things that speak to you. You can take a picture of the screen. Um, you can write some things down if you'd like. Um, but the thing with self-care is you need to have a daily routine. There's something that has to be done daily. Like I said, just as important as brushing your teeth and getting dressed in the mornings. Very important. But then you also need a self-care list for crisis. When, when you're going through a crisis and you are burnt out, you need to know what you need to do to get yourself out of that. So stress destroys the immune system destroys. So when we are so stressed out, we don't have the capacity to fight off what we need to fight off. This alters our hormone levels. The top five cancers out there, you guys, are hormone-based. Are hormone-based. There's a lot of people having difficulties with infertility these days. Hormone-based. Um, this can cause inflammation. A lot of people experiencing um, arthritis, you know, fibro, um, you know, pain and, and joints and, and things like that. A lot of inflammation is going to park itself wherever there's weakness in the body. It can compromise our gut health. And I'll explain how that happens. This can lead to unhealthy behaviors. We can try and find, you know, love in relation, unhealthy relationships. We can find, try and find love in alcohol and smoking and whatever, shopping, um, whatever that looks like. And, um, and this can definitely increase our chances of burnout. Chronic stress equals burnout. Chronic burnout um, equals potentially chronic disease. So managing our daily stress is absolutely vital, vital for our health. So daily journaling. Um, so these are some things, again, you can take a screenshot if you'd like. Journaling is so, so important. This allows us to go deep into self-awareness. This helps us figure out hitting blockages and things like that um, that we can kind of dive deep into. Um, meditation is so important. Again, connecting with ourselves. Um, exercise. I like to pick spiritual cards, praying, setting intentions, affirmation, plant-based eating, drinking water, breathing, water. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you get the idea. These are some things that we can do daily. Dance, listen to music, right? Now, during crisis mode, I definitely recommend hiring a coach. Um, I, any good coach out there will have a coach. And I promise you, I mean, I've had a coach for the last 10 years. 10 years, I've not gone without a coach. Um, and I don't know what I would do without my coaches. I don't know what I would do. Um, friends. Now, when you are sharing your crisis with friends, you want to make sure if you're going in there because you have an issue with your partner, and, uh, and you're talking to your girlfriend and you're like, you feel like you're five feet in the hole. You're like, Oh, like, you know, this is tough, blah, blah, blah. This is what happened. You're explaining what happened. And then she's like, you know what? You're right. All men are like this. All partners are like this, you know, forget them, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, forget them. And then before you know it, you're like 20 feet under and you're like, what happened? I was just five feet under. What happened? And you're trying to climb out even a bigger hole. So you want to make sure when you're in crisis mode, you know who to call. Somebody that can throw your rope and help you help yourself get out of that hole. Not that's going to dig deeper for you. Make sense? Loved ones, journaling, um, crisis. I mean, this is really where like poo has hit the fan and it's affecting us on a cellular level. So it's really important to get that energy out on a physical level. So this is where you can like walk or run and you're setting the intention like, I am going to get this, you know, irritated person out of my system. I am going to work the stress out of my system. Or you can punch a pillow, that mother, blah, 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 and you're punching a pillow. But 
physically do it. Put on angry music, physically do it. Because if not, we store that in. And women, we are very good at this. We're very good. Someone cuts us off and we're like, it's okay. And we're like twitching. It's okay. The kids don't put away their toys or the dishes or clean up after themselves. It's okay. It's okay. And then all of a sudden, you know, some poor soul, I don't know, does something like nothing. And then we're like, blah like vomit all of our stress all over them right um so we want to avoid that and this is why like getting those like you know emotions acknowledging them getting them out in a healthy way is just so so powerful and of course spending that time in nature grounding ourselves all amazing okay so let's jump into healing diet so we've got a healthcare system that doesn't focus on diet because anybody that's eaten at a hospital or been spent time in a hospital, we know they don't care about diet. And then we have a food industry that doesn't focus on health, <laughs> like two massive industries with no connection whatsoever. Um, and both kind of, you know, focusing on, on money <laughs> or like one aspect. Um, so it's really important that we be our own health shiro and eat what's going to help us um, get through, either prevent or get through that burnout. And I know there's a lot of conflicting information out there, like I get it, but tune in and listen to your body. And just, and, and I would say like common sense too. Um, so disease, so any kind of uneasy feeling in the body, disease in the body can only grow in an acidic environment. So we can only get sick when our body has become acidic. So when you start to burn out, it's, we know that our bodies become too acidic. So we want to make sure that we make it more alkaline. Uh, and again, if you are burning out, if you feel like you're getting sick, if you are like stressed out to the max, it requires a change in your diet. So acidic food, pop, alcohol, meat, dairy, all of this causes like immediate inflammation in the body, causes it to be acidic. This messes with our gut health and our mental health. So if you are already feeling stressed and burnt out, if, you're, if we're eating like poo, we're going to feel like poo, right? And when I say dairy, um, a lot of times people are like, no, 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 I don't really eat that much dairy. And I say, no, okay. What about, do you ever eat like pizza? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably like once a week though. Once a week. Okay. No, like no problem. Like, and again, I'm not judging. It's just like, what's working for you or what's not working for you. And I'm a cheese lover. Okay. Cheese lover. And now I, now I eat cashew cheese. Okay. Um, but, and then you got to think like, do you have any yogurt? Do you have smoothies? A lot of smoothies have yogurt. Like dairy is sneaky. You guys, it sneaks into everything. Crackers, um, chips, you know, cookies, uh, I don't know, pasta sauces, all that stuff, right? So you just got to be mindful of how much dairy you're actually consuming, coffee, tea, all that, right? Um, processed food, sugar, any food by man, any food created by man, processed food, packaged food, the moment we put anything synthetic into our, our bodies, we have an army that's a, an immune system, right? Our immune system's like a little army, and then it goes in there going, what the heck is this? A, like, abort, abort, get it out of our system as fast as possible. But that army could be used to fight off, you know, whoever just sneezed in our, <laughs> in our environment or just coughed in our face. You know, that, that immune system would be going in there, you know, fighting that off instead of fighting off the man-made food, right? So we have control over this. Candy, all that stuff. Sugar, it's like wreaking havoc in our body and our mental health as well. So alkaline foods, vegetables, fruits, legumes, sprouts, superfoods, um, you know, anything from mother nature and like variety is key. Color is key. This is how we're going to really um, propel us forward. So plant-based diet is very alkaline. It's very cleansing. It's very healing. Um, and when we are burning out, there's a few things we want to avoid. So you can write this down. You can take a screenshot. We want to avoid gluten processed food, sugar, meat, and dairy. Now you've got to think how much it takes to digest even just meat alone. Um, and we're using all this energy to break it down, push it down, break it down, push it down, right? Absorb it and then poop it out. It takes a lot of energy. So we want to make sure that we conserve our energy when we are burnt out. We don't have any extra energy to get because we are burnt out. We're exhausted. We're drained. So we want to make sure that we're consuming foods that are very light, that are very easy to digest. Um, we can also go into the raw food world, which is amazing. And green smoothies are so good. So green smoothies are always made with a blender, not a juicer. So blenders are like, um, you know, the bullet, Nutribullet, um, Vitamix, Blendtec, those kind of things. Um, and here is just a, a little outline for the smoothie there. 
Okay, let's talk juicing. So there's two types of major juicers out there. One is a centrifugal, and then the other one is a masticating or a cold press one. So centrifugal is um, tends to be a bit cheaper. It can it will heat up. It spins around really fast. It tends to be loud. Um, and when you put those vegetables in, it will destroy some of the nutrients. Now, at the end of the day, juicing is still better than no juicing. <laughs> Juicing is an amazing addition to your diet. Um, it's, a, you know, it's, it's great no matter what type of juicer you are, but if you're like getting in hardcore into juicing, centrifugal um, will destroy some of the nutrients and it's harder to juice greens with them. Cold pressed juicer tends to be more expensive. I'm talking like 350 and up. The one that I did, um, gosh, like seven years ago, I think I got, it was eight years ago. Um, it is a green star and I think it cost me around $700, but it's a, it's a big, it's a big juicer. Um, so it could be like 350 up. Definitely it operates as a lower speed. So it's cold press. Um, you're not going to lower temperatures. So it's not going to heat up your vegetables at all. It's going to retain all of its nutrients. Um, so when you drink it, all of those nutrients are going to be absorbed into your body, into your bloodstream within 20 minutes. And it skips the whole digestive system. So I just told you if you're eating meat and it's like, you know, uh, and I'm not saying don't eat meat forever. I'm not even saying that. But what I am saying is when you're burning out, tune into your body, listen to your body, eat things that are going to conserve your energy. Um, and I would love to get to the point where we have blenders and juicers um, on our kitchen counters, just as much as toasters. Like, wouldn't that be amazing if we had blenders and juicers out that we could juice every day and blend every day? And again, you're skipping that digestive system. When we drink that juice, we're skipping the whole digestive system. There's nothing to chew. There's nothing to break down. We're just absorbing that into our bodies right away. It is brilliant for us. Okay, so right now, there are two crazy trends that are affecting burnout that can cause burnout or, or eventually lead to illness and disease. And these two trends are toxicity and deficiency. So we're becoming so overwhelmed with toxins that our bodies just can't function anymore. And these toxins are coming from pollution, personal care products, water contaminants, like always drink filtered water, um, prescription drugs, anything man-made. Remember anything man-made? Our, our army is going in going, get out, abort, right? Over-the-counter drugs, chemicals, skincare products products, makeup, hair products, plastics, all of that affects our mental health, affects our physical health, um, and is overloading our body with toxins. And think about like plaque on your teeth. Imagine plaque on our insides, plaque on our gut health, um, like in our gut. So that's where we're absorbing all that nutrients, right? So if there's a buildup of plaque in our guts, like toxins, we're, we're not, no matter how good we eat, we're not absorbing any of those toxins. And then the other crazy trend is that food quality is decreasing. So we've got so many man-made foods out there in the grocery store. Majority of the grocery store, 90, I don't know, percent of the grocery store is all man-made foods, right? In boxes, flavored enhancers, synthetic vitamins, growth hormones, GMOs, trans fats, artificial colors, blah, 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 right? It's just, there's no nutritional value in it. High calories, low, um, low nutrients, or it's very loud, low fat. You know, it's always talking to us, the food that's talking to us. Those are all like low nutrients foods. So it is really, really important that we detox and, and do a gentle detox every single day. And to show like, um, well, I'll get to that. <laughs> Let's jump into poop because why not? Um, I am, I joke around with my, with my clients that I'm like the poop whisperer and with my family and friends. And I even have trained. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Oh, my kids are probably going to need therapy when they get older, but I've trained my kids to like watch their urine, to notice the color of it and their poop. <laughs> and this is what I teach them. So I'm teaching you what I teach my kids too. But when you've got your poop in the bowl, you want to make sure um, that it is like snake-like coiled, like it's sunk to the bottom of the bowl. Um, that there's not a lot of smell and there's not a lot of wiping because you've got to think if you are wiping a lot of wiping um, or it's made a lot of mess on the toilet bowl when you flush it, you've got to think it's doing that to your insides. So that's a lot of plaque building up on your insides and gut health is everything. This is where we absorb all our nutrients. If there is lots of plaque on that wall and the nutrients is trying to get through that wall, it's not able to, and then we're not absorbing the nutrients. One of the first signs of feeling exhausted means that we're not absorbing nutrients. 
That's one of the first things, like one of the first signs. Um, so that's crucial. It's really important. This is our gut is also where our second brain is. This is where serotonin is created. This is where that feel good hormone. And this is what regulates our mood. So imagine if we're having upset stomachs all the time or, um, you know, our, our tummy's just not where it's at. Our mental health is not going to be where it's at. We're going to burn out much faster. This is where we feel full, where we feel hungry. 80% of our immune system is found in our gut. So if our gut is unhealthy, our immune system is unhealthy, that really opens us up and makes us more susceptible. So a gut is absolutely crucial to our health. If it's unhealthy, we're unhealthy. And, um, you know, when our body has become so overrun with toxins and we're not absorbing or not giving our body as enough nutrients, um, this is going to cause inflammation somewhere in the body. And inflammation is the foundation for illness and disease. And that illness and disease or inflammation is going to park itself wherever there's weakness in the body. So if you, you know, if this is where like genetics comes into play. Um, now, genetics, we can turn this on and we can turn this off with our diet and lifestyle. So this is not like the closed case. But if you have a family history of diabetes or high blood pressure, or high cholesterol, heart disease, cancer, um, you know, arthritis, this inflammation, this stress, this burnout is going to park itself wherever that a weakness is in the body. So it is very important in order to daily detox, we want to make sure that we clean up our diet. A plant-based diet is like brushing our insides. Drinking a smoothie that's made with a blender is like flossing our insides. And then drinking cold pressed juice is like going to the dentist. Like if we're getting into all the crevices and cleaning everything out. So our goal is to eat clean, get as much nutrients as we can. That's going to help with detox because all the fiber um, is going to be washing that out. Drink lots of water. That's going to be flushing out the toxins. And we want to move. We want to jump up and down like this girl on the picture. Um, our lymphatic system is like the, the detox superhighway of our body. So the more we move, the more we will detox toxins out of our body. And then it's also crucially important that we learn to manage stress on a daily basis because we could eat all the right things, but if you're not managing your stress, you're going to end up sick. And if we don't learn how to release emotional traumas in a healthy way, which I'll cover, how, you're, we're going to end up sick or in pain. So it's crucial to, you know, to sweat, get our body moving. Um, infrared saunas are amazing. Hydrocolon therapy is amazing. Dry brushing, um, Epsom salts. All of that goodness uh, is amazing for helping our body to detox. And um, I just want to touch a little bit on supplements um, and why they're so crucial. I get asked a lot of questions. Um, should we be taking any supplements? They're like, I don't need to take supplements. I'm taking vitamin. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> we need to talk about this. So the main priority, and we've covered this, the main priority of the food industry is to make money, not to keep us healthy. That's not the main priority. So since mass producing our food, they're like, let's get this out as quickly as possible. And we know this because we see the bananas and we know the bananas don't grow anywhere near us, right? We know this. And if they're coming out to our shells green, how long have they been green? When were they picked? And the thing is, when fruits and vegetables are picked too early, it's lacking nutrients. When, when a fruit or a vegetable becomes ripe, that's when it's got the highest nutritional value. It's jam-packed full of antioxidants, um, which is amazing. And on average, we should be consuming seven to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables. Now, I eat meat like once in a blue moon, but I am primarily plant-based. Eating 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, it can be tough. It can be tough. All I have to say is thank God for smoothies and thank God for juicing because then I can like pile all kinds of stuff in there. Um, and just to put things in perspective, again, since mass producing, we're picking much earlier. So if I was to eat an orange today compared to an orange from 1950, I'm going to have to consume eight oranges. I am not sitting down and consuming eight oranges. Like it's not happening. Um, so I need, we need to fill that nutritional gap between what we're eating and what um, nutrients we actually need to feel energized. Um, so we know that fruits and vegetables are good for us, but they are so good for us. They could literally save our life. So there are two types of supplements out there, synthetic, man-made, um, and then whole food. So man-made um, synthetics, this is really hard to digest. It's really hard to absorb. Um, the body fights to get out. Like as soon as we take, it's like taking over-the-counter over, over drugs. The moment we start taking that, that synthetic vitamin, you know, that we find um, 
dollar store, the dollar store sells uh, vitamins now, like it's crazy. Same vitamins that are sold in a lot of um, pharma, uh, pharmacies, which is, yeah, which is pretty crazy. Even in Healthy Planet, um, some of their stuff is synthetics. You really have to be careful like what you're taking. Um, so as soon as we take that something synthetic, our army's going in saying, get out, get out. So again, it can do more harm than good because it's opening ourselves up to illness and disease because our army is busy fighting that off. Synthetic vitamin can have up to 30 to 50 isolated nutrients, a certain percentage of vitamin A, so vitamin C, you know, all of that. Whole food nutrition comes from that, just comes from food. So the food is like broken down somehow and hopefully nutri nutrients is, is uh, sustained, um, you know, in the capsule and then it's easily absorbed by the body and that's gonna fill that gap that we're eating, like that we're missing from what we're buying in the grocery store. And just to put things in perspective, a vitamin can only have about 30 to 50 isolated nutrients and apple has 10,000, 10,000, 30, 50, like no comparison, no comparison. Um, so you definitely want your supplement to be from whole food and tested by a third party. Um, these are the supplements that I take. Uh, I've tried many whole food supplements before, and this is by far, by far the best I have ever had. Um, this is 30 fruits and vegetables. So think of the variety, 30 fruits and vegetables, all different colors that have been picked when ripened, highest nutritional content, cold pressed juice. I just covered about juicing, right? Retaining all that nutrients, dehydrated. So removing that liquid, you're just left with powder. They blend that powder together and put it in capsules. This is tested by a third party. It's the most researched product in the world. Um, and along with those three capsules, I also take the omega, plant-based omegas. Everybody should be taking omegas, everybody. This is crucial for our brain health, our vision, our heart health, our mental health, our joints. It is crucial. Um, and you wanna be taking a very clean source. Majority of omegas out there are from fish oils, which is, I, anyways, I could do another topic on that, but a lot of times it's like heavy metals, um, Farm fish is just a nasty, nasty industry. So I avoid all of that farm fish stuff um, and mercuries and all of that. And I stick with my plant base and I'm very in tune with my body. Cancer survivor, I'm like, I, my radars are like everywhere. And um, within 10 days, I notice a difference. But I have clients have noticed a difference in three months, in two months. So it could be different for everybody. But um, the first thing that I hear from clients when they start taking this, that they feel more energized, uh, which is crucial for burning out. Okay. So step number three, healing environment, healing environment. Um, this is crucial. Can children take the omegas? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Children can take the omegas. You can actually chew the omegas as well. Um, if you like, and, uh, yeah, thanks for asking that. Um, Joe, when um, any adult that buys that capsule, a child will get theirs for free and they get theirs in their gummy form. Omegas is not offered in the gummies, but um, the capsules can be chewed. If you have an older child that can chew the capsules, um, they can definitely take them or swallow them. Okay, healing environment. So we've worked on our mental health game, our emotional game with self-care. Um, we've worked on our physical game with like healing our, our body with healing food and um, with exercise, right? And, um, and now we're moving into our home environment. Home environment is crucial. This is where we're meant to like, when we come home from like the crazy world and we come in and we close the doors, we're just like, ah. Oh. I'm so happy to be home. This is a place where we feel safe, secure. A home is supposed to nurture us. We're supposed to feel nurtured, loved here. And if that's not what you feel when you come home, I encourage you to um, an exercise that I call like energy up, energy down. Like walk around your home. Is your energy going up? Is your energy going down? And if you're walking around going, oh, nope, I hate this area. Why? Why do you hate it? it maybe it's because I know for me, like, <laughs> maybe it's because I'm, I'm, I'm like on my desk right now because I have a junk drawer. I have a junk drawer in my desk. And every time I open it up, I'm like, oh, my energy goes down. So I know one of these days I'm going to have to show that drawer some serious love and organize that bad boy. So where's your energy going up? Where's your energy going down? Um, so decluttering, decluttering, you know, we want that energy to flow smoothly through that house. And if it's not able to, and you're getting stuck on all this furniture, or all this clutter, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult for us. That affects us on a spiritual level. So it's really important to start small, start small, pick a drawer, you know, under the kitchen sink, under the, I don't know, bathroom cabinet, you know, whatever it is, start small. 
And then add your happy touches, happy touches throughout your house. You know, whether it's like pictures, um, quotes, um, lamps, maybe a rug, a blanket, you know, anything, candles, anything that's going to make your soul sing. Um, and then bring, bring more light in, bring more light. It makes a huge difference. There was a um, bathroom on our second floor here that had a like a darker paint. And it, every time I went in there, I'm like, I just drained my energy. Um, so we ended up painting the kids room and I was like, let's just take the extra paint and paint the bathroom. It is like, <laughs> it's like a new room. Now I'm like, I, I'm like loving life in that bathroom now, <laughs> just from paint, opening up energy, opening up light in there. It's just, it's amazing what can happen. And then bring in nature, bring in nature to your house. Plants ground us. They help clean the air. The home environment's five times more um, polluted than the outdoor air more toxic than the outdoor air so it's really important to bring in those plants and um, and help clean out that air and ground us and then create a sanctuary a place that you can go to pray to meditate to um, set intentions to journal a place that just feels like yours and it doesn't have to be a room you know it doesn't have to be a house it could be a small area of the room it could be around your bedside table like whatever that looks like for you creating a sanctuary is just um, so healing and along with this healing environment, it's really important um, to talk about EMFs. We've all heard about this, right? Electromotive force. Um, you know, and it turns out that cell phones, microwaves, Wi-Fi routers, Fitbit, Bluetooth devices, computers, et cetera, all that stuff, they send out a stream of invisible energy waves. And we don't have to see it, but just know that that it's that it does negatively affect us and that we do need to protect ourselves. Um, I was just listening to a podcast and um, I think it was Sprint. Anyways, it was a um, you know cell provider in the States and they put up a cell tower and within that same year, I think it was like 12 or 16 kids were all diagnosed with brain cancer crazy and they didn't admit that it was them but there was no proof that it caused it but let's remove the tower regardless so they were quick to remove it um but they didn't take ownership for it but you can see here in this picture the thermal imaging before and after using a mobile phone so you want to make sure um, that you're protecting yourself so um, i don't know if you can see but i have this protector on my phone this pre um, pre prevents the EMFs um, from coming out. So I can talk to it like this, or I can use the headphones um, so that I'm, I'm completely away from the radiation. I also have a protector um, on my laptop uh, that I use, um, especially if I'm working on my lap, like I make sure that that protective um, barrier that's not nearby so I can't grab it, um, that's on my lap and I have that laptop. So I'm protecting my ovaries, all of that. And I make sure with my kids too, with their laptops and iPads and whatever else. Um, and the truth of the matter is, you know, the more we distance ourselves from anything that's causing the EMF, like we're going to become healthier. So um, EMF exposure can cause, can mess with our sleep, can cause headaches, depression, lack of concentration, dizziness, irritability, loss of appetite anxiousness, nauseousness, skin burning or tingling. And I felt this with my, my Fitbit. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm <laughs> like, I can't, I can't be wearing this. I can't be. So I ended up uh, taking my Fitbit off. And different ways that you can protect yourself. Um, I was just asked, where did I purchase this from? And I should have been better prepared. Oh, this is called uh, Defender Shield. So I went to defendershield.com and we ordered this um, online. Um, so you can definitely check that out. Um, so different ways to protect yourself, airplane mode, um, no electronics while you're sleeping, remove routers from, you know, whatever, any way that you can, unplug them at night um, while sleeping, like try to avoid using Bluetooth if you can. Um, I mean, there's wireless everywhere. When you're driving, like <laughs> if I'm on my phone, it's like, do you want to connect? Do you want to connect? Do you want to connect? I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, it's, it can be a little, you know, a little crazy. And again, like let's not focus on the things that we cannot control, but we can focus on the things that we, you know, that we can control. And we can throw our phone on airplane mode anytime. And then we're not searching for those, you know, connections. Um, and I also have like whenever I'm working, I also have my Himalayan salts um, lamp. I know that's kind of, Kind of bright but um you can buy that from any health food store but i usually have that um, in my office and by my my computer too and that's supposed to help with emfs um, and then spend more time in nature connect with nature ground yourself hug a tree <laughs> and i know it sounds funny but i'm telling you it works it really helps ground our energy which is amazing 
Um, another part of our healing environment, we want to switch out the cleaning products. We cannot like clean up our bodies and, um, you know, clean up our mind without cleaning out our physical environment. We can't have toxins everywhere in our house. So we want to start removing those toxins, any of those like cleaning products. And honestly, my house wasn't even like growing up. My house was not clean unless it smelled like bleach and pine salt. Okay. So, or Windex. So I know what it's like, but it's really important. Like I promise you there are cleaner ways. Um, hand soaps, uh, you know, our hair, our makeup, um, skincare, laundry, like all that stuff can replace with like clean, um, clean items. And one of the biggest tools that you can have in your holistic toolbox is essential oils. Like this can be used for everything. And essential oils are just naturally occurring aromatic compounds, which is just a fancy way of saying that it absorbs um, into your skin very quickly or into the air very quickly. And if you buy your oils from, I don't know, Healthy Planet or wherever, and you put that oil on your skin and then it becomes greasy, it's because they've added um, some kind of carrier oil to it, which could be, you know, olive oil, could be grapeseed oil um, or whatnot. And um, this was some of the benefits. So I was going to talk about the regulations, but I'll save that. What are the benefits? Well, the benefits, they can help speed up the healing process. I am blown away with this. Uh, frankincense just blows my mind all the time. Um, it is amazing at healing. Um, there's so many oils that can help detoxify the body, enhance absorption of nutrients to help relax, calm. Um, you know, if you're feeling depressed and you want to feel more energized or uplifted, there's oils for that. If you're feeling anxious and you want to be grounded, there's oils for that. And you can use them by like breathing them in, um, by putting them on topically, like head, back of the neck, back, you know, on the bottom of the feet or even internally as well. Now, essential oils are not all created equal by no means. Um, you can buy from the dollar store from Costco to Healthy Planet and, and, is, and it, like, it is not regulated industry. So it will say, most bottles will all say, um, uh, will all say like 100% pure essential oil. And, and if the truth is that's not the case, all they need to do is have 10% of that actual essential oil in the, um, in the bottle. And then they can fill that up with like some type of carrier or perfume. Um, the Now brand that they sell at um, health food stores, they'll even say like synthetics on the, um, on the ingredients, which I'm like blown away that they even admit it because most places will just have like fragrances, but they'll have, I think they have synthetic fragrances like on their label. So it, it, that kind of blows my mind. Um, so I only use doTERRA. And the reason why I only use doTERRA um, than any other company is because the way it is sourced. Sourcing is like, it's crucial, you guys. You want that plant to be picked and sourced from where it thrives because it's going to have the highest medicinal grade, right? The highest therapeutic grade. And that is crucial. All of this is tested by a third party, so it's super clean. But this really sets doTERRA apart from the rest, that this co-impact sourcing. Co-impact sourcing, many other um, companies out there will, um, will use middlemen. Um, they'll use a middleman and they'll pay them tons of money. And then the middleman goes to the farmers, um, which are found in a lot of third world countries. And they throw like pennies at them and they say, give me your years worth of hard work. Thank you very much. Here are your pennies. I'm going to go, you know, swim in my money. <laughs> like I'm picturing, you know, what's the duck Scrooge or whatever, swimming in his pool of money and co-impact sourcing works like doTERRA works directly with the farmers. Some of these farmers have had their lands for hundreds of years and passed down to generation. Um, you know, their blood, sweat, and tears is in this land. And doTERRA goes in and works directly with the farmers. Some of the farmers are like, listen, I don't have water. I need, oh, you know, I need a pipeline. So then Do doTERRA will go in and build a pipeline. And then that could lead to building a healthcare center. And as you're creating and helping this, you know, ex community, um, thrive, it's creating like creating jobs, it's creating um, financial stability. Um, and then when you pull back, there's actually a lineup, a wait list to get in to work with doTERRA with this co-impact sourcing. So when you pull back, this is gonna help um, stabilize even the global economy. Um, and you definitely want the top 10 essential oils in your home. Um, like I have them, like I'm looking around, I have them on my desk, I have them beside me here, I have them in my medicine cabinet, um, I have my diffuser going right now, like they are my medicine, they are my cleaning products, um, like it is, it's amazing what you can use essential oils for.
Okay, so let's dive into spiritual awareness. So spiritual awareness the, is, uh, is your higher self. Your, high, your spiritual wellness is higher levels of consciousness. Um, this is when you are aligning with your purpose, aligning with where you're meant to be. And you can look at the bottom there, um, pride, anger, desire, like that desperation, fear, grief, apathy, guilt, shame. All of this are lower level energies, right? Lower levels of consciousness. When we're stuck, and that's kind of our, like, our home base, when we're stuck there, there. This is really when we're contracting our energy. We don't want to succeed. We don't want to, um, you know, be in the spotlight. We, um, we just, we cannot heal in this environment. We cannot grow in this environment. So it's really important for us to learn to raise up our levels of consciousness, um, where we start aligning to who we are and where we're meant to be. And, um, and I teach my clients how to do that. Uh, this is crucial. This is why forgiveness is so important because when we're not able to forgive, we get stuck in those lower um, levels of consciousness. Uh, the deeper you can go into your pain, the deeper you will go into your purpose. And it's really important to learn to heal on a cellular level, you know, to gain perspective. What are the lessons? What are my patterns here? Are they working for me? Are they working against me? And I really help um, my clients see what's holding them back. What are some things that are um, challenges or or hitting challenges um, that are holding them back or maybe sabotaging their success. So as we raise up our levels of consciousness, this is where we expand. This was where we're ready to be successful. This is where we're ready to be healthy, ready to be ex you know, expanding in all areas of our life. Um, so it's really important to recognize you know, what are some of the signs, one of the synchronicities that are happening um, in our life right now. And, and this allows us to move forward with ease when we become aware of these levels of consciousness. And another huge part of our spiritual awareness is intuition, you know, our inner knowing, our connection to our subconscious mind. This is how the subconscious mind communicates to our conscious mind. And at such a young age, we're taught to move away from our intuition. We're taught like, you know, oh, you know, I'm so full. No, you're not. Keep eating. You're like, oh, okay, I guess I'm not full. You know, we're like, oh, I'm so sick. Like, I don't think I can go to school today. Yes, you are. You're going to school today. <laughs> I'm like, I'm saying like this happened to you guys. I don't know, but this is my childhood, okay? Um, but what I'm saying is like, you know, we're taught, we're taught to like suck it up. This is not how you're feeling. This is not how you're feeling. This is not how you're feeling. Like, just keep going. And we, and then we fall into that pattern and then we're like, Oh no, I am tough. I can do this. It's okay. I don't need to listen to my gut. I can keep going. You know, yeah, I know I'm kind of burning out, but no, it's okay. Um, I remember before going to the cancer before being diagnosed with cancer, I went to my doctor and I was like, you know, something's off. I'm so exhausted. Like, you know, I'm, I'm there's uh, it's, my body's trying to communicate with me and I had no idea what it's trying to say. And she's like, Charlotte, are you stressed? I'm like, no, not really. She's like, you're not stressed. She's like, tell me what's going on with your life. And I said, well, I'm working four jobs, you know, arguing with my, <laughs> with my now ex, but arguing with my, you know, my partner all the time. And da, da, da. she's like, Charlie, you sound pretty stressed. And I was like, really? No, this is just normal. You know, like this is, this is just life being stressed and having a million things to do on my to-do list. That was just normal. I didn't even recognize it as stress. So it's really important to kind of tune in. Um, and I teach my clients how to tune in. And, and by tuning in, you're able to dive deep into your self-awareness. You're able to dive deep into your um, make better decisions. Um, I am, sorry, one second. That's my laptop wants to <laughs> shut off. I'm like, maybe I should plug that in quick. Um, but it's really important. Like now I don't even make a decision personally or professionally without tuning in. And I will say to myself, like, is it in my highest good and the highest good of all involved that I go to, that I drive to, that I attend? Um, and then I tune in and then I trust it. And sometimes I'm like, oh, for sure it's going to be yes. And I tune in and it's no. And I'm like, huh? And then I find out, you know, it was canceled or, you know, whatever, some kind of crazy thing. So it's really important to tune in. And the last one is inner child. I believe we have an inner spiritual being, right? Like what were the lessons? What are, you know, what are we learning from this? How are we growing? What insights did we gain? And then we have this inner, inner spiritual, you know, inner parent. And the inner parent is like, um, this is, you know, I should have done this and I could have done this. And, you know, it's the, it's the knowing, right? And then we have this inner child that just wants to have some tantrums, that wants to have fun, that wants to be naive and innocent and creative. So it's really important to tune into that inner child and recognize what we're feeling, where we're feeling it, and how is it affecting us? Now, as adults, we go through traumas. We go through traumas. And a lot of times we don't even recognize that they could be traumas or that we are still holding on to this. It could be patterns that we learned from our parents, um, you know, anything like that. But it's important to know, is it working for us? Is it, is it working against us? And what are our inner child's needs? 
And it's really important to know, you know, when I watch my kids have tantrums and I want to like, you know, strangle them with lots of love, I know that adults want to have tantrums too. Like if I'm having a bad day and my partner's driving me crazy or somebody cuts me off and I'm just like, ah, I want to have a tantrum. I cannot have a tantrum, right? We cannot survive adults having tantrums all over the place. But in like our inner child wants to have that tantrum. So it's important to learn how to connect to that and how to have ta like tantrums in a healthy way. And one of the best things to do, I love this, is that our body is constantly communicating with us, right? whether it's like pain in our stomach or, you know, our breast or ovary or head or gallbladder or whatever it is, this book is an amazing reference book. Um, I think it's like seven, $8 at chapters or indigo, definitely worth picking up. It's a reference book. So you just basically look up the diagnosis, you look it up the body part, and then you'll see what the emotions that we're holding in that area and what affirmation we can say to kind of release that blockage. So it's a brilliant book um, to hold into. And now I'm telling you, I don't, if I bump my elbow, I'm like, elbow, what is elbow? I mean, you know, and I'm like, okay, universe, I got the sign. You don't need to send bigger ones, right? Um, and then this really, like, you know, and then I act on it. Take action. Whatever your body's communicating, listen to it. Stop, listen to it, and take action. And inner child, again, this is where our fun, this is where creativity, we're full of faith, right? We're like, oh, yes, everything's going to be amazing. Um, so it's so important to connect with that. So overcoming burnout, you guys. Um, we're just wrapping up here. Focus immediately on self-care. So you feel like you're burning out, focus immediately. Stop everything, make self-care a like, number one priority. What can you do in this moment to make yourself feel better, to feel loved? What can you do? So pay attention to those warning signs because I'm telling you, we ignore those signs. Those signs become obstacles and then you know it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually it can lead to something you do not want to deal with. Um, and I, again, I know this personally because I ignored all of those signs. I'm like, I don't have time. I don't have time to listen to this. I don't have time to burn out. I don't have time to listen to any of this stuff. And then boom, I eventually got cancer. Um, it's important for us women, us super women, us nurturers who love to support and take care of everybody. It's important to ask for help and, and not only ask for help, but to receive it and then receive it without feeling guilty. Uh, we want to make sure that we're eating and drinking healing foods that's going to energize us. It's easy to digest, especially when we're on the verge of burning out. Take your supplements. This is crucial, you guys. Take your supplements. This is going to increase your energy um, and give your body what it needs. And then create a healing environment for your home. Start removing the toxins. Create a sanctuary. Um, make sure that the energy is flowing in your home and nurture your spiritual health. You know, what can you do to elevate your levels of consciousness? Um, and then create the time to connect with your inner child. If you feel like you want to have a tantrum, connect. What does your inner child need to hear? Where are you holding this in? How can you help the inner child feel better and nurture? What would you want to hear if you were that child? Um, and know that a little bit of action equals a little bit of results. So it's so important to take massive um, results. So um, Jill said, is there anything natural to help you sleep? Um, yes. Um, creating a whole sleep routine is like crucial, crucial to like winding down at the end of the night. Um, lavender essential oil is like so good at calming the mind. Um, and really like not just it's so much more than smelling pretty right it really does get in there and like calm that central nervous system making sure that there's no electronics around you um that you're using <laughs> uh bluetooth glasses um you know and you're not exposing yourself to um light uh, a few hours before bed making sure you're not eating past you know six or seven o'clock at night as well so you're not digesting as you're staying awake so it depends what's keeping you up and if it's emotional stress then you want to make sure that you're exploring that as well so no sleeping that's kind of a loaded question but i hope i gave you some tidbits there um, and if you want different results, you have to take a different path. We can't keep doing the same patterns as we did that, you know, that wasn't working for us. So it's really important that we take a different route. Um, so as I mentioned, <clears throat> my background is in mental health. That's what I went to school for. And I've been studying nutrition for over 20 years now. And I really dove deep into the holistic health world um, since the past 10 years after being diagnosed with cancer. And I've spent over $50,000 in education and workshops and retreats and personal development, you know, never mind all the equipment that I bought, tried, you know, and, and end up buying better. Um, and I, and of course, personal experience. I know what it's like to be in that trench. I know what it's like to have chronic stress. I know what it's like to burn out and then to be diagnosed with cancer cancer at the age of 32. So here I am 10 years later, healthy, um, and I do not burn out anymore. I watch those signs and I apply these, um, you know, five tips and I teach my clients how to do the same so they don't burn out and they align on their path and they feel 
um, energized and fulfilled. So I work with women who are burnt out or on the verge of burning out, who are struggling to get through their day, who are you know exhausted physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually drained, who potentially could be getting sick or irritated or just questioning life in general. They're ready to take their life to the next level. They're ready to, to feel more positive. They're ready to you know, get off that hamster wheel and make different choices take different actions. They're ready to feel energized again, um, to feel successful at home and at work, right? At their career or their business. Um, so I would love to offer you a free 30 minute burnout coaching session, burnout now and burnout now coaching session. So if you are somebody that's looking to regain your energy, to feel more optimistic, happier, healthier, um, increase your productivity, to feel successful at home, your relationships um, or in your career, I invite you to take advantage of this free 30 minute coaching session. Um, this could be a great place for you to start. Um, and I will also add you guys, if you wish, um, into my private Facebook group, the Health Shiro Tribe, where I'm going to be sharing tips, um, stories, <laughs> recipes, I mean, you name it, some of my favorite household products, you know, all kinds of stuff. And in this burnout and burnout now free coaching session, again, it's only 30 minutes. And in this powerful session, you are going to feel energized, more positive and hopeful. Um, you're going to gain a deeper self awareness on what like what's actually draining your energy, which could surprise you and you're going to clarify what you want to achieve what you actually want. And again, this surprises a lot of people they're like they come in I know what I want. And then they're like, oh my goodness, this is actually what I want. This is how I want to feel. This is what I want to accomplish. And then you're going to leave feeling a renewed sense of motivation. So if you're feeling a bit drained, you're feeling, you know, exhausted, you will feel renewed sense of motivation. You'll feel motivated. You'll feel driven afterwards. And I'm going, you're going to leave that session with an action plan to end burnout now. So then you can start increasing your energy to feel happier and more successful again at home and at work. So do make your health a priority, take action now, sign up if this resonates with you, you know, pick a date and time and prepare for major transformation from the inside out um, and prepare to have your life elevated in all areas of your life. Don't, don't do it. Don't waste 20 years researching like I did, spending $50,000 on, on my personal journey and don't ignore the signs and settle for quick fixes. I'm telling you the, the wine, the, you know, the day at the spa, the manis and petties, you know, I joked around about cutting bangs. I know I've done that. I was like, life is not going well. Let me cut bangs. And I'm like, oh, okay, no, life is really not going well because these manis don't look good. You know, we've all done that, um, I'm sure. But don't sell for those quick fixes. Like it's really about recognizing those patterns, what's sabotaging you, removing those um, blockages so then you can excel much faster than you could. So don't put your health off for another day, month, or year. Um, and then this is the bonus that I was telling you guys about for everybody that stuck around to the end. Thank you. Um, so for the next um, five people that book this End Burnout Now session with me will be entered um, to win the um, Health Shiro self-care toolbox. Um, and uh, actually, yes, yeah, so, so anybody that books is gonna be included in this. I'm gonna be sharing, um, you're gonna be getting peppermint oil, which is like Mother Nature's Tylenol. Amazing for headaches, amazing for tummy issues. Um, so, so good. Lavender, calming the central nervous system, helping with sleep, um, great for burns, like amazing oil. Lemon helps with focus, um, detoxing the body, detoxing the environment. Um, Center, which is like Hollywood, great at, um, uh, at clearing negative energy as well. Rose quartz, which is like the crystal for self-love, a natural toothpaste, a natural like 8535, like muscle rub, and a guide on how to, all of you, uh, how to use all of this. So I'm going to pick all your names out in um, a hat and, uh, or a jar or whatever, and, um, and then I'll reach out to the winner and ask for your mailing address. And then I'm going to mail you all these goodies. So this is super exciting. So if you are ready to take your health to the next level, if you are tired of burning out, tired of dealing with chronic stress, I invite you to take advantage of this 30 minute end burnout now coaching call. Guys, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, if you go to healthshiro.com, you can plug in, pick your time and date, and then it'll be all set up for you. 
but this is it. This is your time. This is time to take back your power, to take control of your health. This, this is your time to feel energized, happier, healthier, more productive, um, hopeful, successful, again, at home, in your relationships, your finances, your career, with your kids, all of that. Um, so you can truly step into your power and become your own health hero. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And I love this. All the best heroes are ordinary people who make themselves extraordinary. So good. So thank you guys so much. I love this quote here. I put an S in front of it because I'm like, let's fix that. Um, but it's she who has, um, who has health has hope and she who has hope has everything. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? So feel free to connect you guys. Um, info at healthshiro.com. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, health underscore Shiro. And um, if you're interested in booking that um, free session, please do so. Um, this will, uh, it's a game changer, guys. It is a game changer. Uh, my clients are having amazing results. Um, Jill, thank you so much. Eat, pray, eat wellness. Oh, I follow you on Instagram. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful you guys all stopped by. Um, super grateful. Have an amazing day, you guys. Big hug, lots of love, and uh, stay warm. It's freezing outside. <laughs> all right, you guys. Thank you so much.